Hello, hello everyone. Today I will be featuring the Thunderer. Now, worth noting is that I'm going to be comparing this a lot to the Conqueror because, well, it's pretty obviously a Conqueror copy in a way. Not fully though, but it has basically a lot of similarities and a lot of people are familiar with how the Conqueror plays and how it behaves and so forth. First of all, the Thunderer is available for coal. I think it's like 250,000 coal, so it's actually more expensive than Smolensk. It is, however, not a bad investment in coal. The first things, the most obvious things we can highlight are the guns. The Thunder uses uh, 4x2 457mm guns, whereas the Conqueror has the 4x3 490mm guns. Uh, because of this high caliber, it means Thunder's AP can overmatch 31 millimeters of armor, which is obviously a pretty significant advantage since a lot of cruisers have 27 and 30, and you can overmatch both of it, which means you are very, very punishing against cruisers. The HE shells uh, have an HE pin of 113 millimeter, which means you can, well, you can sit at some cruisers and you can basically punish everything with this HE. Uh, this is both of these values are much better than anything Conqueror has. Conqueror has an AP pen of 29 or overmatch of 29 and HE pen of 104. Uh, the guns also hit very hard. It's classic Royal Navy HE, which means uh, they hit for 14.9k AP and 8.2k HE damage. The worth noting is also that the Thunder fire chance is 63%. And those of you who have watched my stream when I'm playing this game, you've seen that you can actually play this as a long-range HE spammer very, very effectively because the 63% fire chance means that you're, well, you're obviously extremely good at starting fires. Uh, the splash effect of these large HE shells is also quite significant, so you basically shred everything in carrier games. Uh, one or two volleys of this has basically completely eliminated any and all uh, AA modules. You saw how I was able to citadel that guy across the map. Um, it's a bit harder to land some of these shells because they're actually a bit floatier than the Conqueror shells. They're a bit lazier, so to say. But on the other hand, the dispersion is so much better. The dispersion on these guns is actually disgusting. We're not talking about... This is not a Conqueror with the big guns. This is not the dispersion on it. Because the Conqueror has... Uh, the Conqueror uses American battleship dispersion. In my case, pretty much standard battleship dispersion with 1.8 Sigma. The Thunderer has battle cruiser dispersion with 1.9 Sigma. So, if you think the dispersion looks really, really good, that's because the dispersion is really, really good. It's also more consistent at citadeling battleships and in generally heavily armored targets because the AP fuse timer on the Thunderer AP is pretty much the san standard 0.033 seconds, whereas the Conqueror AP fuse is much shorter, which often led to you getting penetration damage but not getting citadels because the shells would arm before they actually punched through to the citadel. So. Basically, in every way that matters, the guns are much, much better. And, well, actually, this isn't even everything about it. Um, the reload on the guns is 26 seconds instead of 30 seconds. Note that when you run the, the 3 million reload module, like I'm running here, it goes down to something like 22.9 seconds. Then you add in something like AR, and you realize that the reload actually becomes really disgusting on this thing, and you, you were talking about 20 second reload in actual combat. So really, really good. The third traverse is also much better. I think it's 25% faster than uh, Conqueror's third traverse. Uh, it also has, I think it has slightly better AA than the Conqueror. Um, the differences are small, but it has slightly better AA. It does have defensive AA, which is basically supposed to be the gimmick of the Thunder, besides these guns, the th defensive AA is supposed to be the gimmick. But, I mean, defensive AA is pretty useless these days. They've nerfed the defensive AA consumable so much that it's kinda eh. Um, but, I mean, it does help you out, and it does make you, of course, stronger against planes, but ultimately, if a carrier really wants to strike you, uh, defensive AA isn't really going to do do much, but if you're hanging out with your team, it does bring some additional DPS to the incoming planes, so it's not exactly bad that or match in action on that angled booster. But what does it trade off in order to get? Actually, one more thing is actually also has a better rudder shift 
It has a 10.4 second rudder shift, unlike Conqueror 17.3. So right now you're thinking, well, wow, this is just better than Conqueror in every single way. I'm a bit too greedy here. I aim waterline, very, very waterline, and he turns out a bit. So instead of getting that juicy devastating, a lot of my shells splash into the water. There you see, of course, the difference in the fuse timer. Um, whereas Conqueror might struggle to get citadels on battleships, um, the Thunder with that fuse timer has a very easy time of achieving it. Now, you might be looking at this like, wow, okay, this thing just seems so much better than the Conqueror, but that's not entirely true. First of all, the heal. The heal, the heal, the heal. Uh, it doesn't, the Conqueror heal heals 75% uh, of pens. The Thunder hit heal only heals 60%, so you basically heal less of the damage you take. On the other hand, your Thunder Repair Party does heal more of your Citadel damage, 33%. That's the same as Cruisers, whereas Conqueror only heals 10%. But it's less than half as effective as Conqueror's heal. Conqueror heal can heal 48% of the health in 20 seconds. It's a huge, it's basically the super heal. Whereas Thunder can heal, run, if provided you're running the flag, you can heal to about 20% health over 28 seconds. So it takes longer to heal and it heals less than half less than the Conqueror. So no super heal. You do have one more heal than in the Thunder than you do in the Conqueror though. Um, and it does actually have a shorter cooldown than Conqueror's heal. But ultimately your, your healing potential will not be anywhere near the level of the Conqueror's healing. Now, so what does this mean? It means that you are essentially squishier. The Conqueror is already considered a, besides the heal, like Conqueror is actually one of the squishiest tier 10 battleships in the game. Like you, you're talking, you're comparing it with the Bon Jovi in terms of squishiness. It's sustainable provided you can disengage, heal up and then re-engage. In those situations, the Conqueror is like, wow, this thing is so stupidly tanky. Like, wow, this thing never dies. But these are the situations where the Conqueror is able to pick a fight disengage, run away, heal up, then come back, pick another fight, and then disengage again and heal up. Basically, it's allowed to give it, it's given the time to disengage, It's not, and it's not eating any burst damage. Anyone who's ever seen the Conqueror give broadside, especially since they raised the Citadel, the Thunder also has to raise Citadel and seen it eat Citadels, or anyone who's seen the Conqueror get torpedoed, knows that the thing is actually not tanky at all, because the torpedo belt is quite garbage, and the health pool is so very low. Look at that. Look at that angle from which I'm shooting, that dispersion, and oof, these guns, these guns really are the bread and butter. So, what we have here is a fantastic gun platform that's essentially even squishier than the Conqueror. So, obviously, and on top of that, we have very good AP with good accuracy, good overpen mechanics, and we got extremely good HE. Um, so what? how exactly does this naturally sh this ship play? We're well, kind of seeing it here now. I'm playing very, very safe. And that's because, well, okay, to be fair, this side of the flank has been kind of painful to try to push in when they have uh, Des Moines, Hinden, and uh, Didi right in front of me. So pushing into any of that will get me melted and killed quite quickly. But ultimately, you tend to naturally play safer in the ship. It becomes a habit the more you play the ship because it does really melt quite easily if you try to focus in. You can't really brawl anyone in this thing. I wouldn't really feel comfortable brawling other battleships because 457 isn't 460, which means you can't actually overmatch battleships that are nose in. And if you go into a broadside versus broadside fight, the Thunder, aka Conqueror Citadel, is raised quite high above the waterline and you are quite easily, quite easily deleted in the thing. That doesn't mean it's a bad ship. Um, it's just you have to adapt to the fact that you're gonna have to be playing a bit safe, especially in games with the Smolensk. Um, the Smolensk has of course been recently added to the game and you know my feelings on the Smolensk. I think it's completely horrendously broken but on ships with uh, like the Thunder, Smolensk he just has a party and it farms you to death so very quickly. And since you don't have Conqueror's ability to heal back fire damage uh, in the same way, in fact, you heal less than half less, um, Smolensk is an even bigger issue. You also don't have access to any spotter plane. Instead, you have that defensive AA. You can't really smoke fire. So you don't have any real way of dealing with most of these threats. So Thunder is really in at its best. It's in a situation where it can kind of stop the enemy push like I've been doing on this flank, and in general it can harass, it, it can play with the team on a flank. 
it's not so much of a solo ship um, pushing down the flank. It doesn't play like the Republic with big guns and so forth. Oh, the mine. Oh, hoo, hoo, hoo. the goods that I did mention. The thing I didn't mention though, well, it's the same thing that with the Conquer, and that is of course. The stealth on this thing is exceptionally good. It's always been Conqueror's strength, and it's also a strength for the Thunder. The ship is very, very stealthy, and add in this better maneuverability on the ship, it's not quite as good as they say. They say the turning circle is supposed to be 820. I think Little White Mouse made some tests on it, and it's still the same 930 or whatever. Basically, a lot of the numbers that you see in port are very misleading. Um, I can't remember what her numbers were, but basically it's not nearly it's not as agile as they make her out to be but it's still more agile than the conqueror and that's important and when you combine uh, this fast turret traverse with this faster reload with a faster rudder shift and this good stealth it means obviously for any cruisers um the thunder is a really really nasty surprise having this thing pop out around the corner like that the mon just experienced it's rough because you can't really angle against these guns either because well they just overmatch everything i want to kill this hindenburg before i kill the republic i got spotted briefly but i'm actually gonna try to see if i can finish the hinden before i turn in to deal with the republic and that's one of the things i really love with this ship consistency we're talking consistent accuracy consist consistent dispersion this is when they first spoke of the Royal Navy battleships, I was hoping I would get my t own tier 10 uh, war spite. That was my dream. Instead, what we got was an inaccurate HE spammer with no citadel and a horrendously boring the Conqueror, which I hated. But the Thunder, that kind of starts feeling like a tier 10 war spite. These guns are meaty, powerful, superbly accurate, but. Uh, on the other hand, this thing is also quite vulnerable to any incoming fire. Can I actually punch through that broadside? Not quite. I was seeing, I wanted to see if I could maybe punch through his little turtle back and armor there, but we got two shatters on the Citadel, so no way at that angle we do not have the penetration. Still, uh, for people who, for you players who are wishing to have a tier 10 Warspite, the Thunderer is pretty much that wish come true. It is an extremely good ship. Um, people will ask me, the one question I keep getting on stream though, hey Flamel, should I buy the Smolensk or should I buy the Thunder? Uh, they're both very expensive coal ships, so it's an obvious, obvious debate. Um, honestly, I think Smolensk as a ship is just more powerful. Uh, I mean, it says a lot of just how overpowered I consider the Smolensk to be. I think it's ridiculous and it's so easy to play and so powerful. But if you're not interested in the Smoke Cruiser gameplay, if you just want to play a consistent, accurate battleship, the Thunder is pretty much that. Um, I will absolutely recommend the Thunder. Uh, it, it might even be too good. I don't. I don't really understand some of the mechanics that went into this, some of the logic that went into the ship. For example, uh, how are these bigger turrets faster? Uh, why do these bigger turrets have faster turret traverse than the Conqueror's turrets? And how exactly are they loading these heavier shells into the Thunderer guns faster than they loaded um, the Conqueror guns? Considering heavier shells should take longer to load, not the other way around. You can see how fast my reload is now that I've taken a bit of damage. At this point, um, I'm literally just trying to go for my 300k damage. And I'll, first of all, I want my Kraken, so I didn't really care that I grounded. I just want to keep my guns on the Wooster. And I want to see if I can maybe finish off this guy and get my Kraken. Uh, but this is also, this serves, I'm not going to heal here. I just want you guys to get an example of just how quickly this thing melts. You see, this is a Wooster. The Wooster is pretty much only farming me. Whereas my Aura Match deals a lot of damage to him. Look how quickly my health pool is evaporating. We got the same Conquer 32mm armor and no super heal to let us heal significant amounts. We're already down to half HP. And then you add in Grosse Corfo shooting us across the map, we're down to a third of our health. That's how quickly this thing melts. This thing really is very, very squishy. And if we really need another backline sniper battleship, I don't really think we did, but on the other hand, uh, it's not like it's exactly in a bad place in the current meta with all the small insk and the carriers and all this nonsense that's gonna farm you, that's gonna force you to sit in the back. Um, it's not too bad in its current role. Uh, but you can see, this is without healing. Of course I can heal up here, but you see how low I am. I'm down to 18k health. That quickly. And I wasn't fighting anything anything super, super terrifying here. Uh, Kurfors I can angle against, so... 
it gives you a, an idea of just how squishy this thing in, is and how quickly it will melt if you try to play it overly aggressive. That's a pretty good volley. Now the hopes here is that I will get my 300k damage because that would make a very nice commentary. But of course the ga game ends before I can secure 300k or get my Kraken at the end. Still though, game ends. Um, still a good game, 299,000, 11 citadels, which if anything it speaks to the consistency of the ship. Uh, if you can get 11 citadels in a ship that only has 4 guns at tier 10, it says a lot about just how reliable those guns are at hitting your target. And that's what the thunder is. It is, you get, ex you what you see is what you get. Good guns, good accuracy, a squishy hull with no really super heal gimmick, whatever. You got defensive AA, but I don't really go into the defensive AA because I think it's a kind of an eh gimmick and Wargaming really are doing their absolute best to butcher, um, to completely butcher uh, the defensive AA and in general. They, they really don't want chips to be able to defend themselves well against carriers. Uh, that's really the only idea I have. Still though, it's not like the ship needs the defensive AA. Team score wise, we are sitting at 3.1k base XP, which is of course a very nice result. And detailed report wise, well, 81 shells, 299. We blapped the Montana, the Moina, him, then a sh bit of Shima, a bit of Yamato, a bit of Corfus. We blapped a bit of everything. Um, but damage wise, you can see how quickly we also melted at the end. And I think that's important to keep in mind because if you haven't played this ship, it's easy to see someone else playing at it and going, wow, why is this guy playing so passive? Like, why isn't he pushing in? Um, that's because the Thunderer is really, really poor at pushing in. That's really what it comes down to. It's really, really poor at pushing into these dangerous situations. Still though, let me show you guys my recommended build for the ship. Since the ship has already been released, it's no longer a work in progress. So I can actually show you guys a build that probably won't get outdated Woo! until they nerf AA again. Right, as usual, I will start with the modules. Consumables, at this point, you really have no excuse not to run premium heal and premium damage con. I do highlight it, but honestly, stop running pleb consumables. It doesn't save you money because you die faster and you earn less credits. If you're playing a tier 10 premium, you can afford to do this thing. Upgrade wise, secondary survival. You don't really lose turrets. On the other hand, AA is kind of one of your gimmicks. Keeping AA alive with your defensive AA is always a nice bonus. Additional tankiness, because you need it. Better dispersion on the guns. They're already really, really accurate. Make them even better. Tankiness, because this thing actually has quite the, quite a juicy rudder ship. Now, the turning circle isn't quite accurate. It's actually a bit bigger. I mentioned this earlier. But the tankiness is, uh, but it's still much better than Conqueror, so you can easily get away with running the damage control here. Concealment, because that's one of your strengths, and faster gun reload, because, well, once again, your bread and butter here. Captain wise, you, if you can afford to have Jack Dunkirk on this thing, oh, Jack Dunkirk works so well on the ship. Um, priority target, adrenaline rush, superintendent, fire prevention. Concealment expert. If there were no conceal, if once again, if there were no carriers in the game, I'd go concealment before fire. But because there are carriers, you always go fire prevention before you go concealment expert. At this point, though, you want to start mixing it up. I would, depending on your points, expert diet marksman is such a nice ability on the ship because it gives you a rather ridiculous 33.6 second 180 degree turn time, which makes your thunder guns feel almost almost like cruiser guns in turret traverse. Expert loader, because both your HE and AP are fantastic. There's literally, there's no reason to just use one. Both are great. And finally, the improved jack of all trades, because one of your downsides on this thing is, of course, waiting for the heal to come up. And being able to get that faster and getting damage con faster is great, because it greatly enhances your survivability. So if you got Jack Dunkirk, he works really, really well. I mean, this is basically my Conqueror build, and it works fantastic on the Thunder as well. Because of this, because of running Jack Dunkirk, and then when you run the flag, you can actually get your damage con down to 68.4 instead of 80, and you can get the heal down to 51.3, I think, instead of, was it 60 or something on it? So you can get fairly fast-acting survivability bonuses here if it comes down to it. Flag-wise, of course, the basic battleship flags you want to be running is better heal, less flooding, less fire. These are 
the bread and butter of survival. Then you get faster consumables, super useful since it affects damage con, and then you get better AA. Once you have these base, these are the five, I would say, the basic battleship things. Then you can start mixing in if you want. You can mix in speed, you can mix in the secondaries, you can mix in the, even detonation flags if you, wanted to, if you want to make sure that doesn't happen to you. Uh, but those five are the basics of any battleship. Anyway, that was my Thunder Commander. This ship is now available. Should you buy this one or the small Ensk? Honestly, I'll leave that one up to you. Both ships are really, really, really good. That's what it comes down to. Uh, both are stupidly effective. Maybe, in my my opinion, probably too effective. Uh, because, well, uh, the Thunder doesn't quite have the offensive power of the Conqueror. You can't really push in the same way. You can't tank the same way as the Conqueror can. I mean, I can, I can literally show you the heal since while we're here, I can show it to you. This thing heals. This is with full flags. 596 in 28 seconds. 596 in 28 seconds. And if we go Conqueror, let's put a flag on give you the full idea this thing heals 2000 in 20 seconds so obviously you don't need you don't need a degree to figure out that which heal is vastly superior so that's basically the downside of the thunder it's not really much of a downside though because in return you get some of the best tier 10 guns in the entire game anyway that was my Thunder commentary. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will talk to you guys later.